Hi, Kids Church, how you guys doing? You know what? I have been missing seeing you and having you in the room to be able to talk to you. So please save all your stories for us for when you come back, okay? We wanna know everything you've been doing and what's been happening, all right? But today's story is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. It's about a mom and it's about her two boys, okay? But it's also about our prophet Elisha. Do you remember in the stories a couple weeks ago, we told you about how Elijah, his uh, teacher, had gone up into heaven with the chariot of fire and the horses of fire, and that God gave power from him to Elisha, who was the prophet that God told to raise up as his guy next to him that he would teach and train so that he could take over after Elijah, the first guy left. So he got a special double portion of God's anointing and his power on him to, to help the people of God. Because back in the old days, before Jesus died on the cross, people were spoken to through the prophet and through the priest, okay? And, and so they depended on the prophet to hear what he had to say. And that's why they would go to them so much. They had to hear from God. And back then, boys and girls, the prophets, they didn't have the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. They had the Holy Spirit on them, talking to them so they could actually hear him. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. And so that's why they always were real accurate, you know? And, and so here we have today, we're going to take up our story at Elisha's house. Now, Elisha, he has been ministering and doing what God wants him to do to help the people for quite a while. And one day something happened that... God was able to use Elisha, just like he can use you guys too, to be able to speak what God says to do and a miracle will happen. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Elisha could do it. And now since Jesus has come, and if you are born again and have the Holy Spirit, you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you can hear from God and do what he says and he'll do really wonderful things through you too. Okay? All right. So boys and girls, in a town of Israel, not far away, there was some people who would live there that were the prophets. Remember that the group of guys from Jericho and from, I think it was Gilgal, when Elijah was going to fly away a couple weeks ago, that there was a group of guys that were prophets that God used and they were called sons of the prophets. Well, one of those sons of the prophets he had a wife with children, two sons, and he died. This woman lived in this town. She had two sons. And she was grieving because her husband had died. And one day she heard a knock on the door. And she's like, what is going on? And she opened the door and there was these two men, kind of rough characters, not very nice guys. And they were saying, okay, okay, your husband, he owed us money. You need to pay up right now. And she said, what? I, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know my husband had, had owed you money. And they said, you need to give us that money now. And she said, can you give me some time so I could, it doesn't say this in the Bible, but we know they left. So she had time to gather up the money. So she got was able to tell them, please don't try to get the money right now and, and I'll have it for you later. And they said, okay, but we can see that you have sons right here, these little boys. And you know what? If you don't pay up, we are going to take your sons and sell them as slaves to pay off your husband's Why? debts. Boys and girls, they were not grown boys that were like, you know, 20. They were like, teenagers to little boys and so this is not a good thing and back then they actually did do stuff like that it was so sad and so this woman was like oh no i my husband's gone and i love my sons i have to do something oh and she was so desperate to have what she needed to be able to take care of this and change everything so she could have her sons and so she looked to god Boys and girls say that, say, I look to God. I look to God. That's right, boys and girls. She looked to God and she said, God, I need you to help me. And then she's like, oh yeah, Elisha, he does miracles. I'm going to go talk to Elisha because he hears from God. Now remember, that's back in the Old Testament days before Jesus came. 
So boys and girls, that's exactly what that widow did. A widow is a woman who lost her husband. So the widow went to go see God's man, Elisha. She went where she would get help. So she came and she knocked on Elisha's door. And you know what? Elisha came out. And he walked out to see her. And she said, man of God, I have something to talk to you about. She said, you remember my husband? We lived over and she told him what town they were in. And she said, but he, a few weeks ago, he died. She said, yeah. And, and she said, I didn't know, but uh, we owe this money and I don't have any money to pay these people who are coming to me or these creditors where he, he got money from. And, and, and she said, and now they're threatening to come and get my sons and take them away from me forever oh. and make them work for somebody else and sell them so that I will never see my sons again oh. and have them to be my sons. And boys and girls, back then, the sons, as they grew up, the way that uh, older people were taken care of is the children take their parents and their grandparents into their home so that as people get older and if they get weaker or, or have some difficulties as they get older and don't have as much energy, it's okay. The way everything always happened was that the children took in their parents and they took care of their parents until it was time for them to go to be with Jesus. And so these men not only were taking the sons to make their own money, but they were taking this women's, woman's ability as a mom to have sons that would care for her as she got older. And that's really wrong. And so you know what Elisha said? He said, woman, he said, what do you have in your house? And she said, well, not much. She said, I have one vessel of oil. Boys and girls, this is a, a, not hers, but this is a, an example of one. And it's full of olive oil, which is the kind that they would have used, okay? And she says, I just have one vessel full of oil. And he said, this is what you do. He said, I want you to go to your neighbors, go to everyone, everywhere you can get. And I want you to collect vessels. That means containers that will hold the oil all different sorts of shapes and sizes of vessels, uh, different kinds. And he says, I want you to go and ask your neighbors if you can have them. And he said, then you are to take you and your sons and go inside of your house and you're to shut the door. And he said, then take your little vessel that you already have, the pitcher of oil that you already have. And he said, I want you to go and I want you to start let me see, I'll, I'll start doing one of these. He said, I want you to start filling up. Can you see good? Yeah. I want you to start filling up each vessel. And he said, and you take that, that oil and you keep filling, and you keep filling each pitcher, each thing that you borrowed from your neighbors, you fill every one of them up. And he said, don't, don't you get just a few. He says, you collect many. So she did, boys and girls. She collected from her neighbors. They said, sure, we'll help you out. And they, they gave her, they said, here, take this one. Oh, I got this big one too. Got it. I got down at, at, at the bazaar the other day. And so they had all these things that they wanted to help. Boys and girls, if we know someone in need, we should help. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to help. They gave to the widow. And so she brought them in. And now we're gonna show you what God did next. She went inside of her house and she shut the door and she and her sons, they had lots of vessels, lots more than what you see here. I'm certain that they were Spots. all over the place. And she, with her son's help, she started to pour and pour and pour and pour and pour pouring and it kept pouring and it kept pouring and it kept pouring boys and girls it kept pouring and it kept pouring and it kept pouring and it kept pouring and it kept pouring oh my goodness boys and girls it kept pouring and it kept pouring and it it kept coming boys and girls and he kept pouring and he kept she kept pouring and then she said oh that one's full so she said, okay, I'm gonna go find another vessel. 
So she went and she started filling other vessels up and the oil kept coming, boys and girls. It wow. just kept flowing. Wow. Wow. And then this one would get all the way full. And then there would be more oil. And she kept doing this over and over. Boys and girls, it filled up so many vessels because God did a miracle that day. He did it for that woman because he loved her and he loved her boys. And because she asked him for help. Boys and girls, we need to ask God for help. Mm -hmm. With any kind of trouble we have, we need to ask God for help. Do you know what she did then, boys and girls? What? She took the oil, the different containers, all of them, and she took them to market. Back then, they had they really needed good, fresh olive oil, and they, did, and they didn't have the stores like we have today. She took all of it to the market and the different vendors, the different people who sold at the bazaars, and she sold all of it, and she made so much money, boys and girls. <sighs> Everyone say, so much money. So much money. She was able to pay back those guys that were yucky guys, right? She was able to come and to give them all the money that her husband owed to them. And then boys and girls, they went on their way and they left because they had gotten all that money back. And she was able to save her, her sons so that they wouldn't have to go be sold. And not only that, she had, God does more than enough, boys and oh, girls. Yeah. He does big gifts and surprises, and he has never changed. He's the same God, and it's the God you love and serve, whose son is Jesus, who died for you on the cross. And God loves us so much, he's a generous father, but we've got to come to him and ask him for help. And he did so much that all the money that she made from the oil, she not only paid those guys off, but she used, she had so much money left over Whoa. that she used that money to live on. He has no problem with giving you and your family what you need. You just got to ask and believe that he's that good when you ask. Wow. And when you ask, he'll help you every, every time. God is a miracle working God. And he never changes. He's still the same God. We are now a part of his family when we've asked Jesus to come and be our Lord and to wash away all our sin and make us God's child. Because God has a gift for each one of us. And inside of that gift is life that is really amazing and good that never ends. And that we are joined with him and he's our daddy and we're his kids. And so we'll get to go to heaven to live at his house and in his place up in heaven one day when we die. But boys and girls, some of you out there and some adults may be watching may not have ever known about God, how good he is and about how much he loves us. And you may not have ever been serious and said, you know, I believe I want Jesus to come inside of me and make me a child of God. Make me a son of God if you're a boy or a daughter of God if you're a girl. And you can do that right now. The Bible says, boys and girls, and this is God's word. When, when you read this, God spoke to these men and told them exactly what to write, okay? And this is true. This is a true book. There's no other book as true as the Bible. The Bible is from God. It's from heaven. And in here, he tells us about Jesus, and he tells us about his love. He tells us about his ways and what is good and what is bad, okay? And sin is bad. That's when you mess up, you know, you hit your brother or your sister or you steal something or you you know, have a bad, ugly feeling towards somebody that you just, you want to think ill of them. That's not good. Or you talk and you say something that's not true. You know, boys and girls, Jesus doesn't like that. God doesn't like that because that's not a part of his love and his life. It's not a part of heaven and his kingdom. So we can get saved though. We can change. You say, saved from what? Saved from going and spending the rest of eternity in hell with Satan. We can be saved. And set free from all that punishment and darkness and terror. And we can be born again. Children of the God who made the miracles to flow to save the widow woman and her sons. God is interested in you today. He loves you forever. And in, with God, he sees everyone in every generation. That means every grandma, grandpa, moms and dads and kids and the new ones coming up. He forever is the true God who created us all. So you say, how do I do this? How do I change and become a child of God? Well, two things you got to believe and say. 
The first thing is you have to believe that Jesus is God's son that came to the earth and that he went on Passover to the cross, sent there by the, the high priest. He went there and on Passover, which is the day where God atones for sin, he gave his life up for us. He died on the cross and he shed his blood for us so we could be unlocked out of the prison that was going to send us right to hell. And he opened wide the door and the way through his death for us and through paying for the sin for us. And he opened it up and anyone who set, believes that Jesus is God's son, that he died for us and that God the Father rose him back up to life three days later again. And that he's alive now forevermore. If you will believe that, which is not a hard thing to do. If you believe that, and you, then the next thing is say, Say with your mouth, Jesus, please forgive me. Father, forgive me for all the bad I've done. I ask to be your child. I believe on Jesus that he is your son, that he died for me, and that he rose up three days later. Jesus, come inside of me and give me that life. Father, I want the gift you have. And if you'll pray that and say, Jesus, be my God and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Then you will be a child of God. Hallelujah. And a miracle working God who will love you and hold you, be with you for always and ever. He loves you no matter what you've done. There's nothing too bad that you have done that he will not forgive because Jesus died for everyone. So pray this prayer with me if you want to become a child of God. Bow your head and say, Father. Father. Please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for my I sins. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that Jesus is your son. Thank you that he came to earth. Thank you that he came to earth. And that he took my place. And he took my place. And he died for me. And died for me. So I don't have to be punished. So I don't have to be punished. And I can now come. And I can now come. Through Jesus. Through Jesus. To heaven with you. To heaven with I you. I receive eternal life. I receive eternal life. Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus, be my Lord. I give all I am to you. I give all I am to you. Show me who you made me to be. Show me who you made me to be. Protect me. Protect me. Do miracles through me, Lord. Do miracles through me, Lord. In Jesus' power. In Jesus' power. I ask this in Jesus' name. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, parents, adults, if you've prayed that, you have made a change. You are no longer in the kingdom of darkness. You're now in the other kingdom, the kingdom of light, and you will go to heaven and receive and experience the heaven, the joy and the fun and, and the wonderful things of heaven with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so good to us, boys and girls. Hey kids, and we're so, so glad that you received Jesus. There's something else that the Lord offers you, and he gives you his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit comes and lives on the inside with your spirit. So they're together, and you can co-labor with him through his power on the earth so that you can pray and heal the sick and cleanse the leopard, raise the dead, cast out demons, and they will leave at the power that's within you because of the Holy Spirit living in you. So would you like to receive the Holy Spirit? Yes. If you would, why don't you close your eyes and we're gonna pray a prayer. Say, Father God. Father God. Now that you're my Father. Now that you're my Father. I want everything you have to offer. I want everything you have to offer. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Fill me up. Fill me up. I want to be filled. I want to be filled. Thank you, Jesus. Kids, the Holy Spirit is with you right now, filling you up. Just because you asked, you have the Holy Spirit now living on the inside of you. It says he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. It said God uses him like a seal. You ever see a jar that you seal jelly in and you gotta go and it opens up and you have the fresh jelly? Well, that thing keeps it sealed, keeps everything perfect inside there. The Holy Spirit seals you up. So 
He's with you. You can talk to him. He's there to teach you, to counsel you. He is there with you and his power lives in you. Now you can pray for your friends who are sick and God will heal them through you. And there's many, many more things to learn. You gotta read the word to learn about what else he can do through you. Okay, kids, we love you very much and we'll see you next week.